In the previous video, we figured out the tension in a rope supporting a 10 kilogram box. Now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the number of ropes supporting that box. And then what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the tension in each rope is. That is, we're going to figure out how much force each one of these ropes has to supply to support this box. Now we're going to make some of the same assumptions that we made in the last video. We're going to assume that the box is at rest. And we're going to assume that the box is in an inertial frame of reference. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify the forces acting on this box. So again, this box is here on Earth, and the force of gravity is going to be pulling this box in the downward direction, giving it weight. So the weight force is going to act in the downward direction. Then there's going to be two ropes, which we're going to assume are equal distances from the center of mass, so that each rope is going to support an equal amount of weight, and so that each one of those ropes is going to supply a tension force in the upward direction, and I'll call this T1. And this rope will supply another force of tension, we'll call this T2. Now, we're going to use Newton's second law, which says that if you add up the forces acting on an object, it's going to equal the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. And again, remember that this is a vector equation indicating that you have to take into account both the direction and magnitude of the forces acting on this object. Now, in this case, the forces are going to act in only one direction. They're going to act in the y direction, in the up and down direction. Now, one of our initial assumptions was that the acceleration of this box was zero. This box is at rest. It is not moving. And it is in an inertial frame of reference. So this whole term is going to work out to be zero. So again, what we'll see is that when you add up the forces acting on this box, they're going to add up to be zero newtons. Now, one of the things that you should remember from the previous video is that when the sum of the forces add up to be zero, the forces are going to balance out. That is, there is no net force acting on this object, causing it to move in the up or down direction. The forces are balancing out. So the net upward force balances out the net downward force. You'll also recall in the previous video that we figured out the weight of this object. We, we figured out the weight of an object that has a mass of 10 kilograms. And in the previous video, we said that that was equal to 100 newtons. So now our goal becomes is to figure out what the sum of the forces is. So we know that there are three forces acting on this object. There's this tension force, there's this tension force, and then there's the weight force acting in the downward direction. So what we can do is we can add up the forces and we can say that tension 1 plus tension 2, and these two forces are acting in the upward direction. These two forces are pulling the box in the upward direction in response to the weight force, which is pulling the box in the downward direction. And since the weight force is pulling the box in the downward direction, we're going to subtract off the, the weight force, because that force is in the downward direction. The negative sign takes that downward direction into account. And then this is going to add up to be 0 newtons. Now one of the things that we just said was that the weight force was exactly equal to 100 newtons. So what we can do is we can write the two tension forces minus 100 newtons equals 0 newtons. And so now what we want to do is we want to solve for the tension forces. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 100 newtons to both sides. What you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other side of an equation. And when we do that, we get T1, tension 1, plus tension 2 equals 100 newtons. 0 newtons plus 100 newtons is 100 newtons, and minus 100 newtons plus 100 newtons is 0. So T1 plus T2 equals 100 newtons. Now one of the things that we're assuming is that these two ropes are attached to points equal distances from the center of mass. So there is no torque causing this box to rotate one direction or another. And so one of the assumptions that we can make is that T1 is exactly equal to T2. That is, the tension in rope 1 is exactly equal to the tension in rope 2. And what we can do is, I'm just going to call this now, instead of calling it T1 and T2, I'm just going to call it T. So in this case, what we can do is we can rewrite this T1 and T2 as T plus t equals 100 newtons. Now in a math class, if you were given x plus x, you would say that it was 2x. So t plus t works out to be 2t, and that's going to add up to 100 newtons. And since we want to know what the tension in the rope is, what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by 2. So what you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other side. And so this 2 will cancel out with this 2, and you'll get t equals 100 newtons divided by 2 works out to be 50 newtons. So the tension in each string or rope is going to be 50 newtons. And we can get that by saying that this is going to be 50 newtons here, and that's exactly equal to T1, which is exactly equal to T2. And so the tension in each rope is going to be 50 newtons. Now notice, if this is 50 newtons, and this is 50 newtons, 50 newtons plus 50 newtons adds up to be 100 newtons, which is exactly equal to the weight of the box. So in this case, the tension in each rope is going to be 50 newtons. So there's going to be a total force of 100 newtons pulling this box in the upward direction, supporting the 100 newton force pulling this box in the downward direction, supporting the weight force. 